Malice at the Palace, as it's famously known as one of the worst incidents in NBA history that involved direct confrontation between players and fans. The whole thing escalated quickly after a fan threw a beverage on Ron Artest, who was lying on the scorer's table. He didn't wait a single second as he rushed to the stands to face the fan. After a couple of minutes of complete chaos, cooler heads prevailed and of course, a lot of players were ejected and suspended. 18 years have passed since the incident, and what is cool is that Ron Artest, now known as Meta Sandford Artest, is a good friend with the guy who threw the cup. The guy that actually started the whole thing that threw the beer, he and Ron speak daily, they keep in touch, and they're really good friends. I don't know how they're still friends, it's amazing, but Ron's that type of guy though, you never know what to expect from Ron," said Steven Jackson via ESPN's The Jump. Artest assaulted the wrong fan instead of Green, who instigated the whole incident. After the game, Artest received a suspension without pay for the rest of the season. His friend Green got sentenced to 30 days in jail and 2 years probation. He said that he was sorry that the whole thing embarrassed him as it did me. It's not like it's not always going to be known as the brawl, but maybe we could take something good out of it," said John Green via ESPN's The Jump. Steven Jackson also received a 30-game suspension by the NBA and was not so happy about making friends with a guy that essentially cost him a lot of money because of all the fines he had to pay and the reputation he lost along the way. Give me my $3 million back and maybe we can talk about being friends said Steven Jackson via ESPN's The Jump. Artest said he was the one who reached out to Green initially, and to both of their surprise, they immediately clicked as people. Even though he was a hothead early in his career, Artest realized there is no point in holding grudges. And this is why he decided to get in touch and his call ended in a relationship between the two. I don't like holding grudges. And this life is bigger than getting hit by a couple of beers, getting suspended and losing tens of millions of dollars. Things happen and we move on," said Artest on The Rich Eisen Show. What many didn't know, Meta was having personal problems at the time regarding his mental health. He was aware of his situation and trying to get better at controlling his temper for the sake of his team. He actually had a professional with him at all times, even on road trips, to work on his issues. So when the most infamous fight of his career broke out, Meta actually wanted to avoid it and be the peacemaker. He talked with former NFL player Shannon Sharp about that day. Meta revealed how he tried to apologize to Ben before the situation got out of control, but without much success. I was doing therapy sessions like every day, so anytime I was getting an issue like when I fouled Ben and he pushed me, the first thing that I did, they don't show this, the first thing I did was like apologizing. My bad, Ben. But Ben was so mad he just pushed me. I ain't get a chance to be like, my bad. So I was like this. And it's clear as day on camera when he pushed me normally, I would go back. I mean, if I'm not afraid of Alonzo Mourning, I'm not afraid of Ben Wallace," said Meta on the Club Shay Shay podcast. Eventually, Meta became more calm and patient with his actions throughout his career, even though he could still have his days. Now he is in retirement and a real spokesman for mental health and raising awareness on this important topic. The best way to lead is by example, and it's great to see Meta doing just that.